Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Terrific Tuesday, the morning devotional. I'm Pastor Ken Maxey, and glad for those that are joining us live here on our devotion time. We welcome you to a beautiful morning. It is September 28th. It is almost 9 o'clock, and uh, we have a, uh, a terrific text ahead of us regarding the uh, Exodus and the, and the Pharaoh letting the people go. And uh, we're going to dive into that in just a few minutes. Today is uh, a, a, a great day um, to be alive. So I'm glad you're out there. Thank you for those that are joining me here on our Facebook Live. I'm going to try to get on my computer and see if you guys are making any comments. Um, I'm a little slow getting around to my Facebook page, but glad that you're here. I hope that you guys had a chance to see the sermon this last Sunday. Uh, we had a lot of, uh, Pastor Josh had a lot of good things to say um, about Waste of Worship. Did a great job, so I hope you guys were able to watch that. See everybody jumping on there. I am trying to uh, get to the Facebook page so I can see who all is on here. I am a little slow today. I had everything organized, but apparently I didn't. All right, I'm gonna look back here. Looks like we have Annie. Hi, Annie and Starlet. Good morning to you guys. Shalom, Starlet. Uh, Jackie and Cindy and Mary, welcome. We are glad that you're a part of this this morning. We see the bells are watching. And Eleanor. Hi, Rebecca. Good morning. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Lori. Hi, Jean. The Lions, good to see you. Hi, Patty. Good morning to everybody. Um, as I was saying, today is Tuesday, the 28th. Hi, Linda. And we have a couple of national holidays this, this week. Hi, Campbells and Mary. Welcome. Good morning. Glad you're on here. Did you know that today is... Good morning, Joyce. Good morning, Val. Today is Fish Tank Floor Show Night. I have no idea what that means. Hi, John Mosman. Good to see you on here. Let me know when to do the timestamp. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means, honestly. I'm so out of it. I'm not sure what timestamp. Uh, I know what timestamp is, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it is 9 o'clock, 9.01 now. So there you go. Uh, today, what, are, what else do we have today going on? Today is... Uh, ask a stupid question day. I like ask a stupid question day. This is National Good Neighbor Day, so be a good neighbor. You know, obey Jesus' commandment to love your neighbor. So show show some appreciation to your neighbor. Some neighbors are better, are easier to appreciate than others. But what do they say? Good fences make good neighbors. Hey, today is also National Voter Registration Day. I don't know if you uh, saw that we had uh, set up around the lobby. That you could uh, you could register to vote and you could also check to see if your registration was still up to date and I did that and um, found out that I am A-OK -okay. I am able to vote and so I encourage you to do to do that again I don't know if we're doing that again this Sunday but if we are I would encourage you to, to do that um, this is also uh, did you know this was also World Rabies Day this is World Rabies Day so I, I apparently uh, it's encouraged people to vaccinate their 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 pets, not not our not ourselves. I just said the word vaccinate, and I'm sure I just alerted Facebook, and all the red flag flags are coming up. Now tomorrow is a good day. It's National Coffee Day, and it's also appreciate uh, uh, BFW Day. So that's a good day. Appreciate our veterans and World Heart Day. So those are some days that uh, you can look forward to to uh, today and tomorrow. I like that uh, ask a stupid question day. I've got a few stupid questions for you that we're gonna look at. I'm gonna share with you guys here. So let me catch up on who all's on here and then we'll jump into Julie. Hi Julie, good morning. Good morning Jim Babcock, glad you could be a part of this. Good to see everybody out there. Val, <laughs> isn't that every day? Uh, so here today is National Ask a Stupid Question Day, and I came across some of these questions 
that uh, they're very, very George Carlin like. Okay, ask a stupid question, get a stupid answer. Hi, Kathy. Um, why do kamikaze pilots wear helmets? <laughs> why do kamikaze pilots wear helmets? Why do psychics have to ask you for your name? Hi, mom and dad. It was good time, good spending the weekend with you. <laughs> why? Um, do they call it instant credit when it actually means instant debt? That's a good question. Now that's a good question actually. It should be called instant debt, not instant credit. Hi Terry Gann. Why do they put braille? Now have you now notice this when you go through a drive-thru. Why do they put braille on the drive-thru bank machines? Why do they report power outages on TV? <laughs> Um, why do we drive on Parkway and park on a driveway? Now that's that's a good question. Why do we have it that way? And why do we say that an alarm goes off when it actually is going on? And why is Greenland icy and Iceland green? <laughs> why is it considered necessary to nail down or latch down the lid of a coffin? <laughs> oh. Why is it that night falls but day breaks? That's that's a good question. Never thought about that. So there's, as a, as you maybe you're joining us late. Today is National Ask a Stupid Question Day. There's there's a few stupid questions for you that you can ask. Well, let's jump into it's five after Exodus chapter eight is where we're at today. I don't know how many of you guys have ever had a chance to fly into Washington D.C. Um, about uh, oh about. I don't know, I won't tell you how many years ago, but for my 40th birthday, my wife, actually it was nine years ago, my wife uh, saved up all her nickels and dimes and she flew us out to Washington, D.C. to have a week's vacation. And it was very interesting. I've, I've flown to a number of places, not a lot of places, but probably more than the average person. And I experienced something coming into Dole's Airport in D.C. that I've never experienced with anywhere else. Usually when you come into an airport, Sometimes you, you're coming in from the wrong side, so you have to circle around and then come in. And one time in Miami, we were landed in Miami, we had to circle and circle and circle. And then finally, we made a big turn and we came down into the airport. But with, with coming into Dulles Airport, I noticed we were doing a lot of this. And it wasn't because of the wind. We were flying fairly low, but we were, we were kind of moving back and forth and um, as we were approaching the airstrip. And finally, uh, we landed. And I kind of looked into why we were doing that and found out that uh, the airplanes have to take a certain route to the airport to avoid no-fly zones because there are certain buildings and structures where there are political people and political powers that be. And um, after 9-11, it was thought best that uh, they, those areas should be avoided with the plane going directly at them. And so to not alert the Air Force, the pilot of our plane had to fly around these no-fly zones. Well, believe it or not, there was actually a no-fly zone mentioned in the Bible. And is in this passage, Exodus chapter 8. And I'm turning there now. We're going to look at um, verses 20 through 32. And it goes like this. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarm of flies on you and your servants, on your people, and into your house. The house of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand. And in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarm of flies, and no flies alone, shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. And I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall be. And the Lord did so. Thick swarm of flies came into the house of Pharaoh, into the servant's house, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies. The Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not right to do so, for we would be sacrificing the abominations of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, then will they not stone us? 
We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he will command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. Intercede for me. Then the, Moses said, Indeed, I am going out from you, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and entered the land, or in, uh, entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained, but Pharaoh hardened his heart at the time also, and neither would he let the people go. You know, when you read through that, man, you just see the foreshadowing of uh, Christ, our deliverer. The three days journey into the wilderness, the three days that he uh, uh, died and, and, and rose from the dead. Um, we just see it over and over and over. But in this case, we see um, an incident. This is the this is the first plague of the second set. And remember, I mentioned earlier there are three sets of plagues. That if you multiply that together, that's nine. And then the tenth plague was the death of the firstborn. That is something that's completely different different than all the other plagues. And so we see this is the first one of the second set. And in this case. Once again, God returns to warning the Pharaoh, as he did with the first one when he turned the water into blood. He warns the Pharaoh, and he says, this is when it's going to happen. And so he gives the Pharaoh a chance to, uh, to change his mind. But he didn't. Pharaoh thinks, you would think after three of these plagues happening, as predicted, as prophesied by Moses, that he would begin to, to change his mind. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened and I guess he was at the point where, um, I don't know, he was invested in this so much that he felt like he couldn't do this. Uh, he wanted to stand his ground, and so he refused. And, again, and of course, all the flies came and swarmed around the Egyptians. Now, I don't know if you've experienced flies. They're so annoying. Um, I, you know, you see those horses that are out there and cows, and they have flies all around their face, and the cows stand end to end so they can swat each other with a tail. I can't imagine how miserable that is, let alone swarms of flies wherever you go, they're all over you. But here is the distinction that God made in this particular plague that's different than uh, the previous three, is the fact that he, God specifically says, I am going to divide my people away from the Egyptians. When this plague hits, I'm going to bring a division between my people and your people so that you will know that I am God. This was a powerful statement. Now, when, Josh, when Joseph brought his family to Egypt to live with him during the, during the great famine and the, and the drought, we read back in Genesis, uh, the Pharaoh brought the, his family and he put him in the land of Goshen, which was a very fertile land. It was a very good land to be living in. And so they were in that part of Egypt. God said, the flies are going to come. They're going to stay away from Goshen. That is a no-fly zone. And the Egyptians are all going to have flies everywhere on them. What's interesting is that some scholars have said that uh, they think that the flies were especially sacred to the Egyptian, uh, to the Egyptian, because it represented the god Uachit, U A T C H I T, and so the plague was God's way of dishonoring another one of these false gods of Egypt. It's amazing what God does. Uh, he is just, he is just. Um, methodically working his way through all the different false gods that the Egyptians had and telling them I am more powerful than they and in, in some in a very real sense this is reflective of the world today you know uh, God still loves the Israel nation and the people of Israel the Jews and yet he gives the Gentiles he, he gives the Gentiles the opportunity to find him as their Lord and in this case he is uh, protecting the Israelites, but he's giving the Egyptians, who would be the Gentiles, he's giving them uh, a picture of who he is, that he is greater than all the gods that they worship, and even giving them opportunity to turn their heart to him. We focus on the Pharaoh, who we read constantly that he hardened his heart towards God, but what about the people, the Egyptians? Did they not see what was going on, and did they not realize that the God that the Israelites worshipped was the God that they should worship. And I believe that there were, I believe there were Egyptians that realized God Jehovah was the ultimate God. 
Well, Thero tried to negotiate when all the sw when the swarms of flies came. He tried to negotiate with them and said, "Hey, you can worship your God, okay, but you have to do it within the land of Egypt, within the border." And Modus and this sounds like a great offer, right? This sounds like okay, we're having a little compromise, a little Egyptian compromise going on here. But Moses points out the fact, and very wisely, he says, "Look, we are going to be worshiping our God by sacrificing the animals that you guys hold dear." and the Egyptians hold dear. And if we are making these sacrifices and word gets out, we are going to have a riot on our hands and it will dis disrupt everything that we're trying to do because the people will be upset that we are sacrificing uh, animals that to the Egyptians represented uh, their gods. He said, we cannot do that. So then, then the Pharaoh says, okay, uh, let's do this. You can worship just outside the land. You can't go three days journey but you can worship worship just outside the, of the land. And Oh, and by the way, will you intercede for me as well? The Pharaoh, man, he was just so manipulative in this situation. And this is something we really have to learn uh, when we are dealing with um, uh, the world. What is it that we are to be uh, like? Uh, um, how is it we're like to be like doves, but wise as serpents? Um and, and we have to be aware that the, the world so often tries to undermine what we are trying to do for the Lord by causing us to compromise what he has called us to do. He called the Israelites to go out in a three days journey for a reason. And the Pharaoh, he was trying to, trying to manipulate that and trying to work a deal and tried to short sight or short change what the Israelites were trying to do. And so Moses goes ahead and agrees, and I think deep down Moses knew that the Pharaoh was going to change his mind. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure that the Lord told him that it was going to happen. So he goes ahead and agrees, and um, the Pharaoh once again changes his mind. What we have to do is, as Christians today is that we have, to, uh, we have to seek after the will of the Lord. He is trying to reach out to each and every one of us in a, in a certain way. He's trying to communicate something for us, each as Christians. There is a part that each of us plays in, in our social circles, in our family circles, any relationships that we have, there is a role that we are to play on his behalf. And he's asking us to do certain things or he's asking us to go certain places and, and um, to spend our money in a certain way um, to do certain things. And the world will come along and say, you know what? Um, should you really give up all you have for the Lord? It kind of goes along with what Pastor Josh said this Sunday. Um, the world tries to have us waste our worship on other things. But when we are trying to worship the Lord with all that we have, uh, the world will try to come in and try to cause us to compromise. But the Lord will put his protection over us. He will put the no-fly zone over our lives if we allow him to protect us. It is when we are going against his will that that protection is removed from us and uh, we're no longer in the no-fly zone. It's uh, the things of the world will come and attack us. And so I encourage you today that the, the Lord has been speaking to you to do something, uh, maybe that's considered very radical to the world, that uh, you would consider, um, is this really what the Lord is having me to do? And even, even maybe uh, sit and talk with somebody that you consider a spiritual leader in your life. And if the two of you can pray together and come to an agreement that this is what the Lord is having you to do, then I would encourage you not to let the world compromise or cause compromise in your life, but to follow whole, wholeheartedly after what the Lord is leading you to do. And the Lord will bless you. Now, you may have to suffer through a, a few things like Moses and Aaron did, but in the end, the Lord will bless you and he will deliver you so that you can uh, live for him. So there you go. There's your words for today. Terrific Tuesday. Uh, again, uh, we thank you for joining us. I want to pray for you all. And then um, I hope that you guys uh, will make it to Sunday morning service. Uh, we There's always a great message. And think about coming to Sunday school. We have some terrific Sunday school at 930. If you've never been part of one, I uh, encourage you to be part of one. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this morning. What a beautiful day that you've given to us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for how you never compromise. Even when Satan tried to get Jesus to compromise uh, his mission, Lord, he, he uh, combated Satan with your word, with your truth. 
and he continued to do the mission that you set before him. Lord, I pray for anyone who is struggling today to do the thing that you have asked them to do, that, Lord, your scripture would fill their heart, your Holy Spirit would bring peace to their life, and, uh, Lord, that they would understand that this is the mission that you've called them to do and that they would that they would fulfill it, that they would carry it out. And when the, when the world tries to attack them or try to cause them to take their eyes off of the mission that you've given to them, that, Lord, um, you would step in and you would reveal yourself and, and confirm in their heart that this is what they need to be doing. Lord, we pray for our family and our friends that do not know you. Uh, this is a dark time in our human history, and it's only getting darker. Lord, we pray for folks that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, that they would come to you and um, give their life to you. Help us to be ambassadors for you today, and we pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a terrific Tuesday. God bless.